So Bitcoin is a really powerful tool for uh, accumulating capital because it allows people to control their own private keys and makes it harder for wealth to be taken away. Um, and and this is kind of like, like I've heard Bitcoin is described as like a hyper capitalist kind of system. Um, now capitalism itself is, a, is, a, is an ideology and a legal system that enables the accumulation of, of capital um, uh, rather than like redistrib like wide redistribution of capital. Um, and, and this accumulation of capital concentrates uh, power and resources into smaller and smaller, fewer and fewer hands over, over time. Um, do you think that capitalism is, is compatible with, with decentralization and accountability and, and, and some of the ideas that you're talking about there with uh, like reduced I'm not, no, like power and hierarchies? Um, or, or do you think that Capitalism and decentralization are, are at odds as concepts. I, I think they're orthogonal in that I, I don't think I think capitalism in itself is a specific way of organizing the pyramid. And when you take away the pyramid and you create something different, then the the label capitalism itself doesn't really apply to this new model. So um, it's it's as obsolete as you know agrarian feudalism is in an urban environment. Um, you can't really apply that model to the new mechanism of organization. I think it's important to make a, a fundamental distinction between capitalism and free markets. The thing about Bitcoin and the reason it's so disruptive is because Bitcoin represents free markets. It doesn't represent capitalism. It represents free markets at a level that has not been done before with a hierarchy or sorry with an architecture that has never been done before, and none of the old labels apply. So, trying to figure out, through the political system, how we rearrange the layers of the pyramid is precisely why this is so exciting. Because we're saying, don't try to decide who gets to the top. Remove the pyramid from, from the equation completely. That is really the proposition that has a lot of people excited. Network-centric systems of organization that are flat completely change the entire political spectrum, and labels like capitalism really don't apply anymore. So, I mean, if in this system, like like I like said, Bitcoin kind of enables this massive accumulation of capital. Um, you know, it's really that accumulation of capital that leads to this this imbalance of power. Mm -hmm. And so, do you think that? that the, the hierarchy might not be arranged politically, but it would be arranged through market forces. Possibly. In which case, exactly. we should use another decentralized network to disrupt Bitcoin 30 years from now. I'm a disruptarian. Mm -hmm. Give it 30 years, once it gets corrupted, start again. And one of the great things about decentralized architectures is they now give us an engine, a template, a recipe for continuously disrupting and the accumulation of power. That is the primary force of these decentralized systems. Right now, we are disrupting a system of power where the accumulation of wealth is based on how many thousands of people your grandfather killed. And if in 30 years we have to disrupt a system of power based on how many early blocks you mined, your grandfather mined, that's still a better system of power than what we have today, and maybe we'll need to disrupt that one too. All right, thanks, Andreas.